All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk with you for just a few minutes about teaching math with language. I think a lot of times as math teachers, um, we forget that words have meaning, and a lot of times we don't relay those meanings to our students. And they don't really understand what the terms mean, and that makes it harder for them to understand the concepts. So to talk about that today, I want to use one simple example, and I want to talk a little bit about fractions. So when I tutor students in math, inevitably, if I ask them if they know what a numerator is or a denominator is, students always say yes. And when I ask them, they always give me the same answer. I'll say, okay, what does numerator mean? And they say the number on top or the number on top of a fraction. And I say, what does denominator mean? And they say the number on bottom. And I'll reply and I'll say, yes, but what does that mean? Because that's really all they've ever been told and that's all they've ever thought about. But I want to talk for a minute again about language and about words. And I want to actually start with the number on bottom. The denominator. So if you look at that word, the root here is nom. So you can go back and you can even take this up a little bit. You can talk about denominations. So if you talk about denominations of coins, not a word that we use a lot these days, but you know, coins can be quarters or uh, nickels or dimes or pennies. They're different denominations. Sometimes we'll talk about denominations in religion, you know, Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, the different denominations of the church. But really what this means is the different names, the different types. And if you look at that word, I usually ask my students, I says, all right, look at the just nom. What does it look like or what does it sound like? And usually they'll look at it and they'll say, sounds like name. And in fact, this is what it means. It means the name of. So denominator doesn't mean the number on bottom. It means the name of the type of fraction. So if we look over here at a circle and we use this circle as a whole, and we're gonna look at a fraction, okay? We wanna talk about the types of pieces. If you're talking about a pizza and you say you have one piece of pizza, it doesn't really tell you how much you have. You need to know what kind of piece it is. Is it a half or is it a 16th? Well, the denominator tells you that, it tells you the name. Now in this example fraction, the denominator is eights. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna cut this circle into eight pieces. Now mine's not perfect, but pretty close, close enough. And the names of all of these pieces, each of these pieces is an eight. That's the name of the type of pieces. Well, then I go to the other number and I talk about it. The numerator, and this one's usually easier for them to see. Once they understand that the name means something, when I, when I take them to this, I say, okay, what does numerator mean? So look, look at the word, look at the front of the word, numer. What is that? And they'll almost inevitably tell me it sounds like number. And I'll say, that's exactly what it is. It is the number of pieces that you have. So the numerator means the number of pieces, and the denominator means the name of the pieces. So now we know that the pieces are eight, so there's eight pieces in a whole. But the numerator tells me that we're only looking at three of those pieces. So when we're looking at three eighths, we can very easily see what we're talking about. So three eighths of the circle is shaded blue. Well, why do I want them to understand that? Well, one, it makes it easy to remember, but the other is it helps them understand operations. So a lot of times students get confused about what to do, when to add fractions, or subtract fractions, or multiply fractions, or divide fractions. But if they understand this concept, some of these things are much easier to understand. It's easy to understand how to add fractions. So I might ask my students like this, a question like this, okay? Well, what do you get if you have three apples and you add two apples? And they'll say five apples. Because three plus two is five, and what are they? They're apples. Well, what if you have three oranges plus two oranges? And they say five oranges. And I'll say, well, what do you get if you have three apples plus two oranges? And sometimes they'll say three apples and two oranges, and sometimes they'll say five pieces of fruit. And I'll say, ah, you can add them that way because then they both have the same 
name. They both have fruit. So you can add them if they have the same name. So what the fancy way to say the same name in math, we've already said the name of the thing is the denominator. And when something is the same, they have it in common. So in order to add fractions, you have to have the same type of fraction, the same name. You have to have a common denominator. So then they, all they know that that means is the same name. So then it's really easy to understand. Three apples plus two apples is five apples. Three apples plus two oranges is five oranges. So three eighths plus two eighths is five eighths. You only add the number. The name stays the same. We're not changing the types of pieces. We're just changing the number of pieces. We're adding them. Likewise, the same thing with subtracting. Um, I'll talk about how this idea of numerator and denominator can be used to understand multiplying fractions on a later video. But again, just understanding what these words mean can really help a student grasp the concept. So I really suggest that when you teach math, teach the process, but also teach the concept, teach the idea, and teach the language.